الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this uh, program of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are going to speak now about his attribute al-ghaffar and then Al-Qahar. Al-Ghaffar, the one who forgives a lot. As Allah SWT has said uh, in Surah Taha, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ احْتَدَى And I am the forgiver for that person who does tawbah, who got iman, who does good deeds, and then he is guided. So the word ghaffar is used here and we know that there are two more words and they are also the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ghafir and ghafoor. And inshallah we are going to speak about them later as well. But here uh, let me say that the word ghafir, the one who forgives, ghafoor which is also an excessive mode in Arabic language who forgives a lot. And ghaffar, also another form of excessive mode in Arabic, who forgives a lot. They, they are mentioned here in comparison to these three attributes of the man. That is zalim and zalum and zalam. Because the man is uh, declared zalim, فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ that in this ummah there would be people who are doing injustice to themselves. So that word zalim is used. Zalum is used. Innahu kana zalum and jahula. That the man was zalum and jahul. He, he was unjust and he was ignorant. And the word zalam is also used. So in comparison, you, we can say that if the man is zalim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafir. If the man is zalum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor. If the man is zalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghaffar. This is how three attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facing three characters of the man. And that is uh, a saying which is uh, taken from Razi, the famous Mufassir of Al-Quran. Here let me clarify another, another point. In this ayah, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِذَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Your Rabb is not uh, a great unjust to the people. Some people would say that if you are negating the lam, it means, it, does it mean that he is zalim? Because you are just saying, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِذَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Your Rabb is not zalam, yani doing injustice a lot to the people. You are just negating his being as the lamb. So it means he could be zalim. For example, when you negate about a person and you say that he is not alam, that he got not uh, great knowledge, but it does not mean that you are negating that he is a alim. He is a alim, but he is not alam. So that is the point which we want to bring into your notice that some people may ask this question. So the answer to this question is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has negated the lamb from himself, why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not zalim, he is not unjust, that is even for one single person, he is not zalim. But looking at the great number of the people, great number of the people, the word the lamb is used, that he is not the lamb, meaning he is not zalim for each one of them. This is how we can understand this word and then there would be no question left. Coming back uh, to Al-Ghaffar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives a lot. But for that forgiveness, he also demands from the people to repent. 
That is the ayah of Surah Taha. Wa inni la ghaffarun liman taba. I forgive for the person who repent. And repentance should be done just, uh, just after committing the sin. Yani you must not uh, wait a lot. You have to ask the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you turn back to the right path immediately. And this is the ayah of Surah An-Nisa which says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah from those people who do sins, who commit sins out of ignorance. ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ and then they repent immediately. Yani after the sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns back upon them. So that is the condition that a person when he commits a sin, immediately after it he should realize that he has done something bad. So he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting his repentance. For the repentance, there are three vital conditions. First of all, that a person should regret, should regret that he has done something wrong. That is very important. And secondly, he should have a resolution of the mind not to do that thing once again. And the third thing, that he should have uh, a good intention not to do that sin once again. So, you can say, Correction of your intention, tashihun niya, and then the regret, showing regret upon uh, what we have done, and the third thing, resolution of the mind that you are not going to repeat that sin once again. So, if these conditions are met, then your uh, repentance is acceptable. There is a fourth condition, if you are responsible uh, for hurting someone, for taking someone's money, then ask forgiveness from him as well, because you have hurt him, you have slandered him, you have backbitten him, ask his forgiveness. Or if you have taken his money, his property, any of his things, then return it back to him, then your repentance would be complete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, has promised a, a lot of uh, a blessing in this world, out of istighfar, when you seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, uh, the, one of the saying of the Prophet, مَنْ لَذِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارَ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجَ وَمِنْ كُلِّ ذِيقٍ مَخْرَجَ وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْسُ لَا يَحْتَسِدْ The person who says a lot of istighfar, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for, for him from each and every worry and also a way out from each difficulty and trouble and he is going to sustain him from a quarter he could not expect. Now let us move to uh, the other attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is Al-Qahar, the dominant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is victorious and dominant in a way that he can do anything he wills. No one is going to, to stop him or to be an obstacle, obstacle towards him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dominant. His will is going to conquer. No person can frustrate him. The person who is pleased with him, he will uh, be, remain in that player until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person who is not pleased with Allah, he would remain in that anger until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take uh, vengeance, which is one of the impression of Al-Qahar, that he is dominant, he is powerful, he can take the vengeance. Yes, he takes the vengeance if there is a reason for that. If you have done something to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or if you have inflicted an injustice to someone else, 
a person against another person, an individual against another individual, a nation against another nation, then of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he comes to take vengeance, nobody can, can stop him. This is this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ We have uh, destroyed them because of their sins. فَكُلًّا أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ Every one of these nations we have taken them because of his dham, because of his sin. This word al-Qahar uh, is mentioned six times in al-Quran. Let us take uh, some of these ayats as the time allows. For example, Yusuf alayhi salam when he was in the prison and he was giving a piece of admonition to his inmates. He said, Ya sahib ayyusidin, arbabun mutafarriquna khayrun amillahul wahidul qahar. Oh, my two inmates of the prison, tell me, so many guards, scattered, different, are they better? Are just one Allah who is dominant, whose will is dominant? And then the ayah of Surah Al-Ra'd, قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَّارِ Say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything and he is one, he is dominant. And the ayah of Surah Ibrahim, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّنُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَّارِ The day, that is the day of the judgment, when this earth is going to be changed with another earth. Heavens to be changed with other heavens and all the people would be exposing themselves, would be exposed to Allah, Al-Wahid Al-Qahar, who is one, who is dominant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who is dominant so that the people, even if somebody does not want to die, he is going to die. Qaharahum bil maut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enforced his will upon them. Everybody has to die. Nobody can say that because of my strength, because of my kingship, because of my this and that, I am going to escape the death. No, he has to die because Allah's will is going to supersede. And the ayah of Surah Ghafir, يَوْمَهُمْ بَارِزُونَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَّارِ that is very similar to the ayah of Surah Ibrahim. That day, the people would be exposed. Nothing would be hidden out of them and Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, because all the people, that is when uh, the people would die, uh, at the doom day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Who got the kingdom today? And then the answer would come from Allah himself, لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَّارِ For Allah who is dominant. And the ayah of Surah Sad, قُلْ إِنَّمَا عَنَا مُنْزِرٌ وَمَا مِنْ إِلَاهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهُ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَّارِ Say that I am just a warner and there is no one to be worshipped except Allah who is one, who is qahar, who is dominant. And the ayah of Surah Zumar, لَوْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَا لَصَّفَى مِمَّا يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاء سُبْحَانَهُ هُوَ اللَّهُ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَّارِ If Allah SWT wanted to take his son, he could have uh, taken from his creation whatever he likes. He is glorified. He is Allah. He is Wahid. He is Qahar. He is dominant. And with this, we come to the end. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار اللهم إني أسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم أسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار Before the break, uh, we spoke about the two attributes of Allah, 
al ghaffar al qahhar and now we are going to speak about al wahhab and al razzaq al wahhab which is coming from wahaba to give to gift so we can translate it as the bestower allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the giver the one who gives you gifts the one who gives you what he likes without any accounting at all any time he likes هو الذي يعطي من يشاء كيف يشاء ومتى شاء بغير حساب the one who gives whom he likes what he likes whenever he likes without any accounting at all and uh, let us take this uh, attribute from the ayah of surah ali imran ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب والله ورب dont let our hearts inclined from the guidance after that you have guided us and wahab lana give us from yourself rahmatan mercy innaka antal wahhab you are the one who gives so that is uh, that is uh, wahaba because when we are going to speak about a razaq there is a slight difference wahhab here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives anyone whom he likes what he likes yani without means without means sometime this uh, this what we want to understand here and uh, another meaning or you can say the similar meaning is that he gives duna ibadin without asking any price for that and he gives bi ghairi gharadin without any motive with him and he gives without asking that is again the impression of al wahhab and in that hadith qudsi which is a very beautiful hadith in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said ya ibadi law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum qamu fi sa'idin wahidin fa sa'aluni fa a'taytu kullu wahidin mas'alatah ma naqasa dhalika min 'indi mimma 'indi illa kama yanqusu al-mikhyatu idha udkhila al-bahr Oh my people if all of you right from the beginning till the end all human beings all jinn all of them they stand in a plane and everyone asks something from me and i have given everyone what he asked they are not going to decrease from my kingdom anything except and this example is given except that one when a needle a needle is dropped into Uh, the sea water yani uh, d- just imagine how much water could cling to that needle nothing and this is what is going to be decreased from my kingdom and uh, then he said ya ibadi innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum thumma uwafikum iyaha faman wajada khairan falyahmadillah wa man wajada ghayra dhalik fala yalumanna illa nafsa O oh my people these are your actions and i'm just going to count them for you and then i will bring them these actions to you and anyway, with all its rewards the person who finds something good he should thank allah and the person who does not find anything good he has to blame himself because he did not go- do good in this world and in the hadith of abdullah ibn abbas the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said اذا سالت فاسال الله واذا استعنت فاستعن بالله واعلم لو ان الامه استمعت ان ينفؤوك بشيء ما نفؤوك الا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك he said to abdullah ibn abbas if you ask ask allah if you seek assistance seek the assistance of allah and you should know that if the whole ummah the entire humanity all the people in this world all of them they got together and they wanted to benefit you they are not going to benefit you except with things allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed already for you and he said in the same way if the whole ummah wanted to harm you with anything they are not going to harm you except with the thing 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also has already recorded it for you. Rufiatil aqlam wa juffati suhuf. And that is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after uh, that decree has been written, the pens have been removed and the scriptures or the scrolls in which the decree was recorded has been dried up. Even the ink has dried. So that is the, the attribute of Allah al-Wahhab. Now let us uh, see some more verses from Al-Quran. For, uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, used this word Wahhaba for a certain action and that is to give children, to give children to a couple. And it, it shows that this uh, attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can it be shared by the human beings? Of course not. He says, لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورِ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجَعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ أَقِيمًا إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ قَدِيرٌ To Allah belongs the kingdom of the heaven and the earth. He creates what he likes. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا He gives, look at the word Wahhaba, which is used here. He gives whom he likes females, whom he likes males, whom he likes, uh, he, he gives them both males and females, sons and daughters. And he leaves whom he likes barren, without children. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ قَدِيرٌ He knows and he got the full ability. So, uh, by this we come to understand that Wahhab is the one who gives things nobody can give. That is Al-Wahhab. Now let us move to uh, the next attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is Ar-Razzaq, the sustainer. The one who provides all things beneficial to the creatures. Wahhab, we said that he gives whom he likes, what he likes, without any accounting. And here in Ar Razak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, he gives you, he sustains you. Things which are needed for your survival. And these things come to you through different means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَاهَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ There is no creature creeping on the land. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got his risk to give him. Every one of them is getting his risk, his sustenance from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where uh, that thing has to stay and where it is going to be deposited means after the deaths. Everything is written in a very clear book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is razzaq, he gives. And uh, uh, we, we know that ayah from Surah Dhariyat which we have already recited in one of the episodes. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لَيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُتْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقِ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, he said, I did not create the jinn and the ins except to worship me. I don't want them from them any risk, any sustenance. I don't want them to feed me because Allah is the one who gives, who feeds. He is Razzaq and he is powerful. But here we should understand that the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hidden, is hidden in this earth. We have to find it out. And this shows that even when you try to find out your risk, you have to take the means in your hands. Without means, you can't get it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has said, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا فَامْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this earth ذَلُولًا, subject to you. So, walk into its tracts. And find out your risk and uh, eat from its, uh, the risk which is provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the earth. And the resurrection would be towards him. So by walking in the, in the paths of the land, the earth, 
What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to, uh, to tell us, take the means in your hands. And when you take the means, you will get your risk. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the example. Many examples. One of the examples, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that if you have uh, trust in Allah, the total trust, you will get your risk sustenance as he gives it to the birds. The birds, they, they go out in the morning from their nest, empty stomachs, with empty stomachs. But when they come back in the evening, their stomachs are full. This also shows, this hadith or this example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you your risk if you trust in Allah, but you have to take the means. This is the example of the birds. They go out, they fly out, they find out their risk in the land, and then they come back in the evening and they guard their risk completely. Here I give you another anecdote that a man, a trader, he got a son. And he said to his son, take this money, go with this caravan, do trade and get back with, with more money. So this lad, who was just a young man, he went with the caravan. Now what happened, the caravan was passing through a jungle. And they camped there. In the early hours of the morning, the lad saw a very... A uh, strange sight. He saw that uh, there was uh, a fox, a lame fox, which can't even move. It can hardly creep on the land. And he was thinking, who is going to sustain this, uh, this fox? From where it is going to get uh, uh, its food? Then what happened? A lion hunted a deer. And he ate from that deer. And he left some flesh and ran away. Now the fox started creeping to that uh, left out flesh and he ate from it. Now the lad said, Subhanallah, look at this fox. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving its food right at that place where it was staying. So why should I travel? Why should I bother myself moving from one country to another country? Why don't, uh, why should not I live at home? So he came back. He left the caravan. He came back. His father asked him, what happened? And then he gave the story. The father said to him, Why? You have seen the fox, but you did not see the lion? The lion who hunted for himself, and then he left the food for uh, the lame fox? Be like a lion, not like the fox. And with this we come to the end of this episode. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, 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 Rahman, Rahim, Al Malik, Al Qudus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhaymin, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar. Allah, 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 Rahman, Rahim. المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار